I've never really been one to outright like complain or rant about anything, but this is a bit of an exception here. So I've, I've been playing a lot of this uh, Impetuous Panda's Henselt armor deck. It's relatively popular. This is a uh, number tier one on the Quint Quintum uh, meta snapshot. It is by all accounts a pretty great deck, but I I don't know. I tend to to disagree. Maybe it's like uh the decks that I am playing against recently. Maybe it's the way I'm playing it. But all in all, I'm not. I'm left with a very dissatisfied, uh, like feeling a after I play these games or while I'm feeling them. Usually, I'll have like, uh, oh man, I lost, but I'll get them next time. Or man, this is this is difficult. I'm gonna learn this. Or uh, outright like, oh, this is just bad. This deck kind of falls in between both of those. Like, is this deck really that good? Uh, should I be spending my time with this? I don't feel like I'm really improving on the much. Like, take this instance, for example. Uh, so I play out my typical play where I play out the, uh, the six strength dude. I can't even remember his name. I haven't played this deck long enough. I've, I've barely played even Northern Realms at all. I played a whole bunch of it in the closed beta, but not so much here. But anyway, so I play this guy. I play out my hand cell. This is the, you know, the key combo of this deck or a key combo of this deck rather. Uh, that gives you a lot of tempo in round one, helps you win round one, and then you can uh, win round three. This gives you a really good opportunity also to pass uh, or to have a safe pass or whatever when you're going first or when you're going second. You can just force your opponent to bail out and win on same cards, which is really good. Unfortunately for me, he plays a spy and then he's going to play Meno. So I had this huge tempo play, and if I played any more into it, then I'd be really behind. And that's kind of the problem. Like this, this play is so high tempo that it can be difficult to use. And it's not like it's something, it's not like uh wounding Axeman, like uh, the discard, the uh, skirmisher. So you can get a high tempo play so you can stay in the round. It's not like that. This, there's, there's not really any setup to this deck besides the six strength dudes. And you pull the six strength dudes out with your head soak. At least I believe that's how you're supposed to be using it. That's how I've been using it. That's how I've seen people use it. So that's what I'm going to go with. Uh, and there's not really, I feel like there's not really that much of a point to have such a high tempo play to have so much of this happening all at once. It seems like you're like spiking up and then you're kind of like still kind of coasting at that kind of level because I don't know. It's just like there's so much high tempo I don't I feel like it's it's totally unnecessary to have that much tempo and as I'll see uh mention later it can be it can backfire pretty hard uh, so I play all this high tempo I'll play my plays I'm going first which is kind of disadvantageous uh he plays his spy I could have played my spy but I feel like the the difference in strength was so great that I could safely pass and if he did want to win the round he would have to go three card he would have to play three cards and go two cards down um which would have been fine with me but I feel like playing Spy wouldn't have really done much. Although, in hindsight, I probably just... Um, I think what it is is that I'm not pushing hard. I think the, like, the stylistic difference between this deck and a lot of different decks that I play is that this deck really needs to win round one. Not necessarily because it needs to control rounds two and three, but because it has such a very stable, unbeatable tempo advantage in round one, if you can get your... Uh, normal combos off that there's not really much of a point to go and go two cards down that only makes you more counterable i think in further rounds but like if you go all out on trying to win round one especially if you're going first you have to be at you have to be so careful not to go and play way way over play which is very easy for the stack to do but at the same time you can't you don't want to go too many cards down like it's not like action like action can go action can be two cards down Going into round three and still win the games. Like if you just watch Swim's videos, you can, it's, uh, it's a very common thing that happens. He'll go way down in rounds one and two to try and make that happen, or notably round one, and then round three. It doesn't matter these two cards down because it's just the how the action deck. But this deck doesn't really work like that. There is no like you're not gaining bonuses on your opponent's turn like Axman does. Like Axman will be buffed when your opponent gets hit in addition to whatever disruption weather you have on their side. So even though you don't have any cards, you're still gaining points. 
Whereas here, you have to be playing cards to be getting points. It's a linear fashion, or it's a linear to your cards, whereas Axeman is linear without your cards. <sighs> That's difficult. I don't know. This 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 deck is really tricky, and it, it doesn't even feel like that nice. Like uh, I, I played something like 15 games yesterday or something like that. Uh, all hence out, all casual ladder, of course. And like over half the time, no, not over half the time. It's exaggerating. Half the time, a little bit under half, my six strength dude got Alzer Thunder or he got uh, Witchered and destroyed. And that just throw my, that threw my whole hence out combo like through a loop. Like I'd feel so much better just playing something like Full Test or playing uh, even Radovid. Radovid is, uh, I don't know. Like there's some kind of, there's some level of like eh, is, is rat of it all that good but then rat Foltis isn't that all that synergistic either. Ah oh, man, this is tricky. This is really really tricky. Like I usually don't come up against dumps like this. I might have to uh, just like not play at all and just try and watch other people. But that can be really boring if I don't like the deck to begin with. Which I don't like. I don't like this deck to begin with. It's too. It feels like a big clunky orc or your or an ogre that's just like stomping around and swinging its big old club there's like no finesse to it which is why i like uh, hybrid consume and spying calvate so much the deck is flexible like i'm not saying it's not but it's like it's like you're playing you're constantly playing go fish and like except you're not just losing at go fish because they answer your your uh your, your card but they're using your card against you they're taking their card and then they're using it against you to win and that feels really bad which i'll uh i'm not i'm not sure if i actually have an example in this particular game but it's very common to have uh like go up against an opponent that will do something like uh steal one of your heavy calories out of your graveyard and hit one of your armored units and take away the armor you're going to use uh, it's pretty common to have trouble little either stolen or eaten, consumed. Uh, maybe I'm just getting really unlucky moving in. No, but no, it's not just unlucky. Okay, so that happens in Nilfgaard, and then that happens in con hybrid uh, consume or against monsters rather in general. Um, and then I'm also going up against like super tempo heavy punish uh, punisher decks like Movement Skeletal uh, and Mulligan Skeletal. Both of them, uh, I've been going up, up against them, and they've been, uh, we'd get to like a, a round three or something, we'd be at the end of round one or at the end of round three, whichever one it was, and they would, they would move all my units to one row, right? And I had all this tempo that I'd built up, and then they would just use their Miracle Tailstorm to just like, you know, win the game by like 60 points or something, like a 60 point strength, strength swing. Mm, it's difficult. It's tricky. I don't remember if I win this game. I just remember thinking like, uh, I think this is like I recorded this game because I knew I had some pent up frustrations about this deck, and then I played one game after this, and then like all that stuff happened. <laughs> uh, I think spe I think specifically it was Mulligan Skull or uh, Movement Skull Tau that just like hard countered me. They were able to, to like, I think they, like, out, it was, like, a perfect counter. Like, Alzer thundered my six-strength dude. They uh, witchered my troll. I couldn't draw into Stannis or Shawnee. And then we go to round three. Uh, and all this, like, tempo that I'd built up, they had, they used the uh, Zoltan to move all my units to the same row and just annihilated me with Miracle Tailstorm. Ah, oh, yeah, 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 this deck. I don't like it. I don't like this deck. I'm still going to play it, but... Man, this deck is really. I don't even know. I don't even know if it's like that. The deck is difficult to use because I don't think it's particularly all that difficult. Maybe there's a lot of nuance that I'm missing, which I think I don't know. Like, I feel like I pick up pretty quickly on nuance in decks, but like this one in particular is just so weird. It's like so unsatisfying to play with. I think. I think it's because I want more. Like, there's a lot of different like mini combos that are kind of going around in this deck. But I think I want more stable, reliable, like one, one to three combos instead of like four to six kind of thing. I feel like this deck is trying to do too much at once. And like, I can't really say anything against it because obviously like if the Gwentlemen are going to put it at tier one and if it's a deck made by Impetuous Panda, I mean, like one of the best players in the world, I can't really. 
<sighs> and I'm not even saying like uh, that I'm necessarily like playing this deck as it should be, and I'm still not getting results. Not what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to say like it's not fun to play this deck. It's just an endless source of frustrations. It's flexible, but it's not flexible, and I'm not even sure like how to explain it. Like I feel, I feel like all my threats are. I have so many threats, and so many of them are like easily counterable. But it's not just that they're counterable; is that it's that my opponent can use them against me, which is like double terrible. Whereas in a lot of other decks, you don't really have that. And also, like this deck, for some reason, like I don't know, I'm just gonna complain more because this is a complaint video. For some reason, this deck has Marigold Tailstorm, which I think is pretty good in general, especially in this uh, high tempo meta, but. When you have zero options to move your opponent, it seems less good. Like, I think I'd rather have an Igni than a Marigold Tailstorm, but I guess that's not really comparable since it's a gold and silver. So I guess it does make sense to have Marigold Tailstorm. Mm. And in general, I just, I really just like having super high strength units. It, like, I think this is just, this is a good deck. But it's being punished so hard in this meta, or at least the meta uh, where I'm going up against, full of control options, dis control and disruption. This is like a beginning of the meta that kind of like dominates. Because uh, there's not a lot of control options out. I, I think, is that how it works? Like there's limited control options at the beginning, but control options still are able to punish greediness. But this deck is just on... Just so that it's not so greedy that it's heavy pun it. Oh, it is though. It is though. Mm. And I kind of broke my rule of playing out Deke's Red a little bit early. Because I was trying to get out some of my other units besides. I think I was trying to specifically look for my other six strength crewman dudes. The problem I have with playing Radovid, I think, uh, changing to Radovid. Even though I think that would make this deck a little bit more palatable for me. Is that uh, you have this like silly mind game of waiting for your opponent to play two units out. And then they like have the mind game of not wanting to play two units out and trying to get the most out of the one. And it's just like it's so annoying. I, I, I'd rather just rather it just uh, like go up to like, I don't know, 10 strength and then remove one of those chains or something like that. I don't know. I'd rather just hit one unit uh, reliably without having to think too much about it than trying to hit two units. Because they know you have the leader ability, right? It's not like Ox. It's not like, oh, does he have Ox? Does he not have Ox? If you have Radovid, it's 100% he has this double lock, so I don't want to put two, lock uh, two lockable units on the field at once. And it's like you can kind of pressure them that way so they don't get as much value as they possibly could have. But at the same time, they can still play against... They can, they can mind game you into not using right of it so they can get all the value they need out of that one card. I don't know. It's just it's kind of annoying, which is kind of a minor side. But, you know, this is like this is a complaint video. It's like what we're going to do here. There's nothing instructive here. <laughs> oh, man. I just don't know if I should even like continue trying to play in this deck at all. In this meta at least. Ah, but I need to learn how to play it. That's kind of the unfortunate thing. I, I can't always just play for fun. I sometimes play even if I don't want to. Which sounds really silly. Considering it's a really good card game. <laughs> and I also don't really like this. Uh, this machine that I've got using here. I don't really get it. It doesn't. I mean, it gets good strength for a bronze. That was like, what, 12 strength for a bronze, which is fine. But it seems like it's so low impact, so low. <sighs> like, it doesn't really do all that much. Oh, I didn't use the extra to get one of those guys out. Excuse me. This game is boring me. I don't remember if I win or not. 
in case you're curious, I typed in that uh, that first light because I've been seeing a lot of cold weather. Actually, what was funny is I was going up against Mulligan Skeletal. I uh, Mulligan the first light away because I didn't think I needed it. Their very first play was a gold weather. <laughs> yeah, so that's the stack. Uh, I'm pretty sure I lose by this point. There's no way I can close that distance and just a rally. Yeah, and then one of these guys. And even if you do get the, the crewman off, it's still not all that useful because how often... I don't know, man. I don't like this. I don't like this card. I don't like this whole deck. I don't like anything about any of this. Maybe it's just maybe it's because I'm using an outdated deck list or something, and like the new deck list are not using like like and like poor uh, PF uh, poor flanking infantry. They are forced to the melee row, which makes them even more susceptible to Marigold Tailstorm or effects like Igni. Uh, the battering ramps, they don't even get all that much off those six strength siege supports or whatever they're called. These like the Dunbaton calories are the only parts. The Dunbaton calories, Stennis, uh, maybe some of these uh, Redanian Knight Red dudes and Trello are like the only d decks parts of the deck that I feel are consistent and nice, and I like them. And then like everything else, I feel like needs to be scrapped. Besides like the golds and some of the silvers, but I feel like the bronzes needs like such a big overhaul. Like get get rid of the battering rams, get rid of the poor flanking infantries. But what would you even replace it with? I've been seeing a lot of people use like uh, Redanian Knights, which seems kind of nice. A nice, consistent, strong unit that can play uh, Agile unit that doesn't really need any kind of synergistic effects. It's pretty good on its own, and it's pretty good counter against weather. Even though I'm not really going up against much weather. And then maybe I could uh, like why why aren't I using Sile with? Uh, Potions. Hmm. Something, to, something to think about. At this current time, this deck is really frustrating to play. I'm not sure if I'm even going to play any more of it, but that's it. That was my complaint video. Thanks for watching.